a little bit more on what they do in the NFL. That, that's a different type of combine. We're going to do, uh, of course, the 40s. We're going to do uh, the three cone drill or the AL drill. Are you guys familiar with that? If you're not familiar with it, it's basically like an L. I don't want to erase that. So, L3, L drill, a three cone drill. Set up five yards apart here, here, here. And basically, they're going to demonstrate this to you. Yeah, move up guys so you can see what's going on. Okay, see. Um, basically what you're gonna do is go here, to here, back to here, around here, back here, finish that way. That's what I take Okay, but what they'll do is walk you through it. That's why it's called an L through it. Shaped like an L. Okay. Uh give me time on that. Thank you. The cross shovel. But you go here, here, here. Start in the middle. I know most of everybody does that. Okay. Um, that would be one of the drills because they don't have all the facilities set up in Lancaster for the vertical, which still do the broad jump. Just a standing broad jump, stand, pop out as far as you can go. No stepping back, none of that. It's just two feet, pop it. Uh, Tomorrow we're going to have to make an adjustment. If everybody bring sneakers or flats, okay, and you brought what other type of shoes did you bring? Cleats. Cleats. Okay, the cleats you can use on the, the indoor facility or outdoors. But because we're sharing the facility tomorrow, make sure you bring both. Bring your sneakers because we're going to be in the gym first. Is there any questions on that? Okay, so what we're going to do in the gym, we're going to do most of that. We're going to do almost everything in the gym except for the 40. We'll do the three cone, we'll do the pro shuttle, and we'll do the standing broad jump. I don't want to do the 40 in the gym because it's not conducive to what we need to do, especially for some of the bigger guys, the whole line, D-line, we like to get you in the 10, the 20, and, and we will get a 40 time on it. But what's more important to colleges, especially for a whole line, D-line, is your 10 and your 20. You want to see how quick you can get off the ball. You know, some people can excel further down the line, and some people can't. But it's, it's just your initial first step is what is what is important. Okay. Then when we go back over to the the indoor facility, then what we would do we would get started on. We do the forty. Everybody will do the forty. We'll get that time, and we'll, we'll take a little break, and we're going to individual drills. You'll be broken down into your positions, and you'll work with them. But the quarterback receiver. You're going to do the, the NFL quarterback receiver running straight down the line. I know most of you have seen that on TV. Okay, very important to stay on that line and just snapping your head around. D back to be with everybody that's going to be working with you that's played some type of professional ball or in somebody's camp. Uh, we got a couple of Division I guys here that work, uh, kids just played yesterday. For pick, they played Navy yesterday. I don't know if any of you guys saw that game. So he'll, he'll be here while I'm working with you guys on the D line, D line, O line type deal. Um, so we got some good people with, with a lot of knowledge that will be able to help you all. Coach Norman, that's going to be with the quarterbacks and receiver, plenty of college experience. He's getting ready to get back into college. So it, it doesn't hurt for you guys to be seen by him. Coach Mitchell played eight years in the league. 
I played in the league, uh, but I'm going to basically be overseeing the guy that we worked with, some of the running backs. Coach Johnson played at Michigan State, uh, played for Kansas City, a couple other teams. Uh, I think who else we have? Brandon Joe, he'll be working with the guy. Uh, you played without missing it. Uh, Brandon Joe, you played without missing it. Okay, Chris Melton, he's helping right now. I don't know what he's doing. Is he coach? Chris, is he coach at 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th? Yes. Okay. You guys haven't seen any real big oh, oh, <laughs> You guys have any questions? Like the line had one. Okay. What we're trying to do is what we're gonna do is interview everybody individually. What we're gonna do your height and weight. And then we're gonna just kinda talk a little bit about social media. Uh, some of you guys uh till they bring some of the stuff. Just to kind of make you aware. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask your parents to come in. So, are they out here? Okay. Once you ask them to come on in, so they can kind of have an idea of what's going on. All right. So if your parents are here, or your coaches, you can grab them. Whatever. Coach, they have work representing you guys. Yeah, basically, and some of you were here last year, so what I'm basically doing is kind of going over what we're going to do. We're trying to create it more of the NFL type atmosphere as far as what they're going to do. And I, I just went over with them and I want to share with you what we're going to do. Tomorrow is going to be somewhat of a challenge, but not much, because we want to make sure everybody here that sneakers are flat, because we have to go in the gym first because that track team is in, in, going to be an indoor facility. You know, I'm sure nobody expected this weather out here. So they're going to go in. So what we're going to do is do the drills that we can do on the gym floor. We're not do the 40 on the gym floor. That's got to be done in the indoor facility where guys can use the track, clean us up, chair shoes, or whatever you, you brought to run in. I was telling them, the, one, the favorite drill by most of the NFL doing the combine is what they consider an L drill. And I don't know if most of the parents, you know what that is. Some of you do, some of you don't. Just in case you know, it, the drill is set up just like an L. Okay, the kids will start here, they will go to here, back to here, and it will come around around back through. That's the, that's the old fashioned. Anybody, for some of the older guys like myself, it's a three cone drill. They would be doing that. The pro shuttle, which I was telling the kids, this, they start in the middle, and you go either right or left. I don't know if you can see this. And you go right or left, and you'll be timed. That's how they get a lot of the time for the, the shuttle. The other thing would be the standing broad jump. We don't have the, I don't think Lancaster has it where it's set up for the vertical. I don't want anybody to get injured trying to slap the wall or anything of that nature. We're here to learn and have a good time. Uh, so hopefully tomorrow, after doing everything and making adjustments to the schedule, should, hopefully we should be able to finish up by 1, 1 30, maybe a little bit sooner. Most important thing, guys, is to compete Enjoy yourself, have fun. I'm talking to this group because you're uh, in a hotel. I would have to do this with a, another group, the Texas kids, because you know, they're not gonna come all the way over here and all that kind of stuff, which is fine, we'll make adjustments. But uh, like I said, we wanna have fun, show you stuff, compete, but we don't want anybody to get here, okay? Everybody wants that opportunity. If you, you know, you know what you're playing on your indoors, you're diving and stuff like that, you don't need to grab anybody that's not tackling. You know, it's, you're showcasing your skills. Sometimes you're going to get burned. Sometimes you're going to burn them. That's part of the game. So you just want to compete, compete fairly, and just make it happen. Have a great time.
I think uh, Coach Cooper and I, I know the rest of his family, I think they're trying to live stream most of it back to the school. What's important is when they live streaming, okay, for me to sit up here and, here and tell you guys that, oh, hell, every head coach is going to watch it. We still got bowl season going. They might not watch it, but that's why they have the recruiting coordinators and the GA. But now most of the big schools have the quality control guys. So somebody would take a look at it. Okay. Who? I cannot tell you. They wouldn't give it back to me. I'm just like one of you guys. I'm, I'm here to help put on uh, the combine because I, I get to do that for the NFL for that regional combine. So what we're doing is I was telling the kids that what we got, everybody that's working with the kids tomorrow, either got pro experience or played at you know, Division I level in football. And we also got a kid that's coming that's going to help out a little bit. He can't do much because he just played against Navy yesterday. One of our big defensive linemen played for Pitt. So he's coming in. His mom's here helping. So I know you, some of you guys know. He had a good game yesterday, but had a rough time uh, the Navy yesterday. So, but it is what it is. But uh, so we got we got good guys helping, and I mean, Coach Norman. Uh, I, I think somebody. I don't know if you guys heard him speak last night, but uh, has probably about 16, 20 years of college experience. So, so you, you, you know me, and I ain't good hands. Okay. Um, trying to think what else I want to touch on. Uh, uh, mostly everybody here should have been academically solid. Okay. Because what Coop wanted to do is make it uh, more of an academic type national combine than just a regular combine. Because you, you, know, you can get kids from anywhere. But you get, and everybody in here knows no grades. Can't participate. You're going to just stay on the high school level. And your goal, and if you have a goal, your goal is to reach even further. You don't want to. You don't want to be one of the guys. And I'm sure, Mr. Vance, when we go back home, you don't want to be the guy. Man, you remember back in? Oh man, I used to. I used to be the man in high school. But that's all they can tell us about. That's where it ended because he wouldn't contribute or compete in the classroom like you compete on the football field. And, and I wasn't a, a great student. I was a good student, but I got smart. And somebody told me this when I was in school. And the guy said, why do you guys go to the back of the room? And I don't know how many of you do that. Does anybody in here go to the back of the room? In, cl in the classroom? That's a great thing. I did. And went right back to the back of the room. The guy pulled me up one day, said, you're a good athlete, good student, and you're going to the back of the room. So as I thought about it, I said, well, now you're going to hear see what's going on. Because the teacher, would come to the to the room like you were sitting here, she would never ever look at the people in the front. She always looked at the one in the back because usually the ones in the back are the ones showing off, talking or doing whatever. So I said, let me try it. We were gonna have a government quiz uh, and she wanted to go over it with her. So I asked her, I said, can I change my seat? She said, oh yeah, come on, come on. Fine. All the seats up front was empty. So I just sat up front. She had a quiz. She said, you know what? I'm going to give you the quiz, but I'm going to just call on you and ask you the answer. I said up front, I ain't know it. I ain't know anything. <laughs> she was just doing like this. And I'm sitting right in front of her. She never even bothered to ask me a question. From then on, all the way through college, I sat up front. I never got called on unless I raised my hand or unless she pulled my hand up or something like that. But the thing, long story short is, guys, you gotta understand what's in front of you and how to, how to survive. 
you can survive on a football field, it's easy because it comes natural to you. In the classroom, I had to work a lot harder. And I don't know how easy stuff comes to you, but guys, be smart. Don't be afraid to ask questions because we don't know everything. Be a student of the game, also be a student in the classroom. Because now, the NCAA rules, which I'm sure everybody's keeping up with, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get hard. Now you can see now, even the kids that are not making the grades, the junior colleges are red-shirting kids because they don't have the grades to junior college. When we were coming up, I never even heard of that. You don't have grades for a junior college. Just think about it. That means that and I'm not trying to be funny. That means that you are not putting any effort into your books. And I'm, right now, I know I'm talking to better students, but you you got partners that you know that you hang around with, or your friends, or you associate with. You gotta you gotta tell them wake up, wake up, because pretty soon, just your mediocre job. <laughs> that you're going you're gonna to probably need a master's just to survive. It's no more, okay, man, just go to college, get the, my BS and stuff like that. Look, as long as we go, as long as we stay in this world, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's not going to get easier, it's going to get harder. So we got to be prepared. You're preparing yourself now because you know the seven quarter room, you got to have your 10 core subjects. You no longer, you used to could take your subject classes that you failed going into your senior year or end of your junior year for summer school. They're cutting all that out. They're making you become a student. I'm not upset with that. The other thing, uh, a little bit, I'm just kind of touching on a lot of stuff before. We start interviewing your sons, and before we do the height and weight, then we're going to release you for the day. Social media. Sometimes, and I'm sure a lot of you reading kids losing their scholarship over social media. Anybody seen that? Kids losing their scholarships because of that. Okay, got to remember. You post what your buddy posts. Almost like a crime, You're guilty by association. If you know that a friend of yours is posting something like that, and you repost something that is inappropriate about a young lady, about something that's going on, you're just as guilty as he is. So the, I, you know, I, I remember a college scout recruiter called me and said, hey coach, I know you're not at that school anymore, but I'm, I'm telling you now, we're not going to recruit this young man. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking at his Twitter stuff too. And come to find out that his Twitter says he had three Twitter names. I only knew about one of them. And what he did was he reposted something negative about a young lady. And, you know, and all the laughter, you know, all the kind of signs you guys make on that, they did not recruit him. And I called the coach about it, and I asked him, I said, Coach, you know that your, your man posted something inappropriate? And, and the coach said he's not going to recruit him. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to get with this kid, I'm going to call his parents, and, and say, hey, you know, you, we can't do this. His first question to me was, who was the coach? Okay, what difference does that make? We're talking about the kid. That shouldn't, that shouldn't even matter. We, we got to get the kids straight. And, you know, we're talking about social media. Guys, be careful what you post. You know, that's just simple as that. You know, because you don't want to be one where they have you in the paper at all. Wisconsin uh, scholarship was pulled because of so social media. Okay, decision making, good decision making. You know, 
like coach here, I'm from uh, West Virginia, small town in West Virginia. Some of the stuff you guys go through, I feel sorry for it. We didn't have all of this, all this craziness. You know, and the background is that your families kind of look out for each other, almost like the village. They look out for each other. If you weren't doing the right thing, they, you know, they would correct you. Your coach would correct you. If none of this stuff, man, if you say something to somebody's kid, man, you probably got to fight everybody in this family just because you corrected it. And, you know, you, you talk to them and say, hey, uh, come up. Uh, Johnny, for example, is not going to be supposed to be doing in school. I'm going to have to let, you know, relieve him or uh, suspend him from the team because of S, Y, Z, you know, the rules. And the parents don't come up there saying, oh, I understand, coach, you know, like, like back in the day. I was scared to do something because I was scared to get a beating going home. I didn't want to go home and tell my mom something happened in school and why are you showing off at school, that type deal. But now they'll come in and want to curse you out because that kid was wrong. And guys, when I'm, I'm just saying all this stuff so you can understand that we got to, you know, part of this is trying to make you better young men. And that's, and that's what it's all about. But you got to make great decisions. The people that you hang around with, the kids, if they really care about you as individuals, they will say, hey, you know what? You probably need to go. Old school was, all right, we might get in trouble. So you, I know you, you're not into this. You need to go home. Go ahead, get, get the walk and get the step, now, however you want to put it. So we would leave. Whatever they did, that was on them. But you got to have people that care about you as people. But then again, now with your generation, hey, there's so much jealousy, man. Because you're trying to make something out of yourself and you're trying to get ahead. So you got to be, again, you're back to, you got to be careful who you socialize with. What they used to say, everybody that smiles and always your friend. So just be careful. Uh, before I go off on any more tangent, any, any, any questions, because you know, we, you know every, I see both of the fathers shaking their heads and we know the deal. And then sometimes, we, I know telling my kids, oh, dang, that's, that's from dad. <laughs> like, okay, where else you want it from? <laughs> I'm thinking. And it doesn't really soak in. But then, if you guys come up here and you were talking to him, oh, Dad, did you hear that? I'm like, didn't I just say that last night? But it, it doesn't register. But sometimes, it, that's why, to me, the coaches are very important in a lot of the kids' lives. And we, you know, your parents, you shape them, but we have put that molding on them to make sure that they, they turn out the way they should. If we're doing the right thing, too. We need to also lead by example. So that's important. I always tell the kids back at school, they're like, Dad, Coach, oh, man, you, you coached it a great game. I said, yeah, on Saturday. But during the week, I'm, I teach. My easy, the easy part of my game is to coach on Saturday because I have taught you during the week. I didn't coach you. That's where your teaching is done during the week. If I have to coach you on Saturday, I teach you on Saturday, I'm not doing my job. So we are teachers first. The coaching is the easy part. Because if, you know, if it's not, I'm not there. You know, they, it, the easiest thing for them to do now is get rid of coach. So, any questions on any time? Changing the rules, anything that we're doing tomorrow, or anything of that nature. Y'all shake your head, y'all make me feel like I'm doing a pretty good job. So. Mm -hmm. what, what time do you say is when they start tomorrow? That's a good question. I was waiting on that. Uh, we're going to probably get started around, we'd like to have everybody there by 8 o'clock in the morning. It's at Lancaster. So 
So you need it. If you don't have rise and stuff like that, you need to kind of get with each other and then try to work it out because it, the combine and the high school deal is, is separate from the junior rank academic all American game. So we're kind of on our own to get there and back and forth. So we're get there at 8 o'clock. We're going to be in the high school gym in the beginning. And the parking is between the high school and the stadium. Not the indoor facility, so don't even go over there. We're going to go into the high school first. There should be somebody in there to let us on. We should get there 750, 755, you know, somewhere to try to track down people to make sure. Come on in, Ben, have, have a seat. Uh, where, where is it? You got an address? Let's or Lancaster, yeah. They, they're supposed to have that information up at the front desk. Uh, if you don't find it, Coach, I'll be around. We'll make it happen, but yeah, this Lancaster uh, High School. It's thirty. Uh, somebody uh, Google it. It's thirty-two minutes away from here. You, you have it. I'll give the answer in just a second. Okay. Yeah, at the front desk they had everything for the the bowl game. Uh -huh. They didn't have anything for the combine. I said a little lost. Okay, yeah, that's why that's why we're doing this now so right. we can make sure right. we're on top of everything because when he sent out stuff, everything should have been included. And so I don't know if we got mixed, messed up in the minute, but we ain't gonna point fingers. Yeah, I, 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 I'll I take the hit. I mean, because I knew about one o'clock, I think time for today, then three o'clock, time for tomorrow. I'm glad you're talking about eight o'clock. Okay, so, three, okay, I missed that. Yeah, no. I got nothing. <laughs> 1 p.m. to 1 p.m. today was a workout, and then 3 p.m. tomorrow was a workout. No, the, the, from 1 to 3 is the parents' orientation. They're going to have uh, something for all the parents and the advocate on. Uh -huh, no, no, no. That's yeah, not yeah, dealing with the company. We're doing okay. this stuff now. Because okay. I, I don't know what we're sent out. Uh -huh. And I, we don't need to confuse anybody. That one to three, that could have been part of the, the junior rank stuff. I mean, uh, junior academic stuff. So okay. don't get that confused. That web stuff is really simple. If anybody needs the address, Coach just looked it up for you. Anybody, if anybody needs to copy that down, we can take a minute to do that. Can everybody see that? No, I can't, but it's it, is it 200 East? Um, Wintergreen Road? Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. We today. We're, so let's start with today, so we can finish up. All right. We kind of changed up a little bit, and I'm glad everybody was here because what we wanted to do, we're going to interview each of the kids individually, and we hopefully we're going to be able to get the height and weights here today. If we can't, we will do it over in the gym tomorrow morning. Uh, for some reason, the school, uh, the hotel, the scales and stuff didn't work out. But what we're doing now is just talking about some of the things that might come up with the kids in their lives, uh, in the school district or whatever. What we want to make sure that we're doing right now is just talking about some of those things. Once we interview everybody and stuff like that, we'll be finished for the day. And yes, just so we can, because we didn't supposed to go no longer than one o'clock because we got everybody else coming back in. And, and with the high school guys, it's quick. See, my thing is with you guys, I don't have to be the dead horse because most of the kids out here are already kind of academically solid. Usually when you do the normal deal, with you do the normal combine, you got to talk about all of that because most of the kids don't have the grade, you, you gotta talk more about the NAIA, prep schools, junior colleges, and things of that nature. So hopefully from the experience here and the numbers that I get uh, from tomorrow's workout, I'll be giving the coop so they can input it. And I say coop, that's Brett Coop for football. So they can input it. So then we can go from there. So you can say, well, if you need to know about what your numbers were and all that type of stuff, you can contact and email and say, hey, my son was so so. We, we need to know what's, what his tests were. Okay? But now, I don't know if he's going to put it online, that type deal, 
if you come up and stumble and don't run a, a great 40 time, I wouldn't worry about it because you, you, we don't want to, you don't want to give that information out anyway. Okay? Because I think sometimes I, I know I have kids come and I say, Coach, man, I ran for Nike. I ran a, a 4 7. I played wide receiver. If you're not ready, I tell NL, if you're not ready to run that 40, don't do that. You go to the rivals and all that kind of stuff. If you're not ready and you run that time, that time sticks with you. I don't care what nobody said. And, and like the kid told me, he's about 6'4", about 200 pounds. He probably was a four or five kid, but he had just played basketball, kind of tweaked his ankle, ran a four, seven, or six or something like that for rivals or Nike, one of them. And they told him, don't worry about it, we know you're injured. What you think was online? Whatever he dies, what he dies. Four, seven, six. So what they did was the recruits were coming through. They were like saying, uh, you know, good looking kid. Good looking kid. I'm like, okay. Well, explain that to me. Coach, uh, like, you know, we want our receivers a little bit faster. I was like, okay, what's a little bit faster? Uh, four, five, four, four, like, okay. I said, so where did, where did the kid run? The kid wasn't even at my high school. He was at another high school, but usually a lot of kids asked me to help out. So he said, uh, four, seven, six. I said, I can tell you that. I, I said, I can tell you now, coach. That kid is faster than the four, seven, six. I don't know what happened. I said, but I'm in charge of track and field in New Jersey at the time. I seen the kid win the 100, running a 10-4. So you telling me you base this all for one time. Kid has one bad day, and you're done. He, he ended up, I, I, I knew the uh, coach, I knew Todd Graham who was at Arizona State. He was a former West Virginia youth coach. I said, Todd, need to take a look at this kid. I said, he's faster than a 476. I said, take a look at him. I said, you need to see the whole makeup. You need to see the kid in person. They flew him out there. There's someone that offered him right on the spot. He comes back. I called Dwayne Dixon. He used to be at the University of Florida. He's at Ohio University with Coach Soul. I said, Coach, I said, y'all missing the boat. He said, hold on. I mean, now, all of a sudden, the kid goes from zero Division One offers, like five or six. But he went to Tulsa because they were the first one to believe in. And that's where he finished. He played, started for four years. But this is a 476 kid that, because of one mistake or one injury, he runs at 40, and so then on, and they said, Coach, uh, you tell your kids don't run at 40. I said, yes. If they're not ready, and you tell these kids, I'm not going to post it, and then everybody go online and look at it, and it's posted. We had a kid, another kid, kid probably about six feet tall, line, a D2 kid, one double A at, at the best. They put him down as 5'9". 280. 5'9, the kid's six feet tall. Because they had somebody in there working the thing that I don't know if you couldn't read how to measure or whatever. All it takes is one person to mess it up. So now that kid don't get recruited because he's listed at 5'9, but then you gotta get on the phone. The coach, take a look at it. So the kid goes up to Edinburgh. That's where he ended up. I said, Coach, we got him listed at 5'9". He said, well, we measured him. He's six feet tall. I'm like, oh, uh, one mistake. That's why, like, guys, you got parents. When you take them to these camps, you better be on top of it. Because you would be the first one like, OK, now what's going on? Why my son is not? That's why I always tell a lot of coaches, Go to, like, for us, like with Ma, 
go to Rutgers. Because they go to Rutgers, then they do these satellite, satellite camps where you have more than one division, one team now. Like Old Dominion, Penn State, Georgia State, they were all at one, one site. Along with five or six double A's, five or six division twos, five or six division threes. Okay, between that, somebody should be telling your son something. And another thing, all that stuff about, I don't know how many of you guys get caught up, like some of the recruiters, oh, this kid's a five star. He's a four star. He's a three star. I don't get into that. I said, don't, don't rank up. I said, the thing is, and then you compete against this kid, and, they, and your son, the, they'll come home and say, cool, I just, I just compete against a kid that was a five star. I killed him. Okay, you didn't have enough money to be a five star, a four star, a three star. So why we, you know, my thing is why we get into all of that. I don't understand. But what I'm saying, go to go to the college camps. Let them guys, let the, let the coaches evaluate. Let them see you, because it's more than just that university there. And most of them will give you a true evaluation. You can walk up to them after you know your camp and say, Coach, this is my son. Or they look, and if he's doing really well, trust me, we don't really supposed to be talking to a lot of people, but you'll get the word that they're interested in your son. It doesn't matter what school it is. They like him, you'll get the word. So well, nobody now if nobody's talking to you, okay then. You need to go to another camp because it's a school out there for, I believe it, it's a school out there for everybody. Might not be Division I. Might end up being Division Three. It doesn't matter. It's a school for everybody because in the long run, football is sports icing on the cake. Because when you go to the bank, ain't nobody asking you what team you're playing for. You're paying that bill. And if I said, uh, no, we got a check from the checks. None of that. So we got to be on top of our game. Parents and students. Coach, I apologize, but uh, it's Jordan and Aaron that pull here. Doing this? Is there any way I can pull them right now? So you can pull them, man. Y'all yeah, just caught me on my tangent. That's we, 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 we definitely can come back and be in here a little bit more, but. Got to get okay. to the Armed Forces game, TC. Yeah, okay. and we'll get with you later because we got to we got to interview them. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, All sir. Right. Okay. All right. If the parents want to go, what I got to do is get set up and we can start interviewing. Where you, you got to go, man? Well, no, I'm not messing with you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I just have one more question. You got the itinerary for tomorrow. We're meeting up at eight o'clock. We're doing everything there. So everything. Ready. What we're gonna do tomorrow? Uh, because I, t I told everybody when you got here, we had to go A, plan A and B because they're going to be using the facilities too, uh, Lancaster High School, the indoor facility. So we're going to meet over at the gym. We're going to do as much as we can in the gym. That's probably going to be mostly like the pro agility, the uh, three cone drill, and the broad jump. Okay. And then the coach is going to talk to them individually until we can walk back over at 11. When we get back over at 11 and stretch a little bit, they're going to run the 40. We're going to go into individual. They'll be with uh, that group. You know, if you're a lineman, you'll be with this coach. We have a number of pro coaches that have played pro ball that's going to be working with the kids. So they should be fine. Then we'll go from that into our one-on-ones. Then we'll open it up and get alignment, you guys, you don't get no love. So we're going to open it up so y'all can get love, man. Being a former running back, I have to, we'll work with you. All right, we'll do that, and then we'll do a little running back, linebacker, one-on-one uh, -on -one type of stuff. And then if anybody want to switch and compete against each other, you know, like we do a little call-out deal. Oh, oh he, he ain't checked me. Let's see if he can check me, you know. Make it a little fun for them. Get a little challenge going. It's over. We do the remarks, and then you guys can contact Coach Coop and see 
how, how they made out. And if you don't want your stuff given up, and you don't have a good day, I'm telling you, don't let them post it, man. That goes for anybody. Just say, hey, I'd rather not. And if they post it by mistake, don't call me, man. My number is not in the book. So I'm just playing. So if the parents want to leave out, if you got questions for me, I'll be around. Cause you know I'm I'm, I'm double duty, working with the uh, the juniors too a little bit.